Hi, this is Ryan with Better Tattooing, and today, let's get grounded. Let's talk about realistic expectations with tattoo cover-ups. All right. Bah. Okay, now that's over. Let's be realistic, folks. <laughs> um, well, let's do this from the client side first. I've been doing these like AB videos and I think maybe we should just keep doing that, right? So uh, let's, let's focus on the client expectations when going in to get a tattoo, right? Um, let's say you, you've got a bad tattoo and the minute that it's done, you're like, I know I gotta get this thing covered up. Okay, it happens, um, I don't know how often, probably it's more often than you know it probably should um, because that's just horrible. It turns the spot into an, a money pit, right? Um, but if if you are a client who has experienced this stuff and you need to get a tattoo uh covered up we need to be realistic in our approach to it to make sure that you're going to get the best you know experience possible and the best result um so it's usually always going to come down to a few things right like what what the quality of this uh outcome is going to be and you like the first one always right off the the bat is going to be can't multitask it's going to be a tattoo artist's ability right um, some people claim to be cover-up artists. It's fine. Um, but there's more to doing a cover-up than just putting something on top of it and just saying it's done. Um, people who have learned how to do cover-ups um, as a specialty have had to suffer probably some of the worst <laughs> aspects of being an artist. This is coming from somebody, like my, one of my specializations is polishing turds, as we call it in the industry. It's not covering it up, it's not replacing it with something else, it's taking a tattoo that is bad and making it look like it should have in the first place. That's what I'm really good at, right? Um, so yeah, but people who are doing like literal cover-ups, I mean, they've had to go through so much trial and error to get to a point that they understand how to cover up things effectively that there is gonna be a big book of business behind them that doesn't you know, really hold up. It's like becoming a neurosurgeon, right? When you go in to be a neurosurgeon, you have to go through so much time and so much education because when it comes down to actually like doing it and you know, not having a, a fallback or somebody to save your ass, you've gotta be really friggin' good before you can call yourself a neurosurgeon. So a tattoo artist ability is kind of the same way. There's um, an artist in San Francisco Bay Area whose name is Verb. Uh, you can find Tattoo Verb on Instagram, Rock and Roll Verb, you rock. Um, who is, in my opinion, one of the best cover-up artists on the planet. Um, they can do anything. <laughs> go look at the Instagram. It's, it's amazing, right? But when you go to Verb, you're going to pay for that knowledge because Verb's been doing it forever. I mean, like, Philly, right? Like, it just, it's awesome. Um, at the same time, I've gone on and just, you know, scoped out general images on Bing search, Google search, you know, images, looking at uh, websites, uh, just, you know, surfing around, trying to meet people, do whatever, going to conventions and seeing portfolios. And people who claim to be, you know, cover-up artists are not at times, right? So if you are a client and you're looking for someone to do a cover-up, the first thing you always need to do is check out the artist's ability. So what we're going to do with this one is going to be like... We'll do A, because we did one up there. Compare, right? Let's get a large book of business. Let's get as many pictures of this person that you're thinking about going to and the cover-ups that they have done. Now, I want you to go and I want you to compare them to other people out in the industry who are considered specialists at And this should be for any type of tattoo, right? If I specialize in fine line tattoos, go look at the world's best fine line tattooers. Right, this person who's doing it at this place, you see their portfolio and it looks like all the lines are really chunky. Does it look the same quality as the world's best? No. Does it even look the same? No, then you're, you're gonna start gauging that level of results, right? You're gonna be realistic about what the outcome is gonna be. If you see somebody who looks like they really do know what they're doing, but maybe it isn't the same as the world's best, okay, well, how far off are they, in your opinion, right? Is their work gonna be collaborative, um, with you and so far as that you can have input working with them in their style right because that's what happens in the industry now that you know what your the outcome is going to be and it's within those ranges of what you want to see right and you're not going to do fine line realistically to cover up most tattoos but it's just you know an example so compare right uh, we're going to contrast that's going to be our thoughts right about what we can get out of that that tattoo experience right and then we're going to decide, like, is this a good idea? So one of the biggest issues that I see with people when they're coming in to get a tattoo cover up 
is that they want to have this 100% perfect cover up and it's not at most in most cases is not to actually like remove the tattoo but you're trying to remove the experience right the tattoo is here you have tattoo right and if you're looking at it you always see the tattoo right but the tattoo isn't just this on top of this you have all the other stuff right all the other stuff like when you got the tattoo if the person wasn't nice to you right you get a look at it and every time you look at it, you're like, I don't like this tattoo, plus that person was a piece of shit. If it was a good experience, but maybe it didn't heal well, or maybe there's something else that was going on. What if this tattoo was meant to represent somebody who had passed away? You know, I like lost my little toe bean friend, my puppers, you know, and I got this, this tattoo to remind me of how much I love them and it looks like crap and I want to get it fixed or covered up. All of that other stuff is going to be carried with the tattoo regardless of the cover up, right? Because you're going to have to work through it in a very specific way. You're gonna have to, when you look at it, right? Let's do this again. We'll like look at it. Look at tattoo, right? I don't know why I took off the orange coat. You're gonna go look at the tattoo and then you have to work through this, right? You have to have the origin, right? And then <laughs> the sadness and then the cover up. Right? So the origin is going to be all of the emotional weight, everything that you brought into this that you want to get with the tattoo. You spent all this time doing the research, blah, 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 blah. Then you get the tattoo, results in sadness. And then you get a cover up. So you still have to, every time you look at that cover up, you're going to remember where it came from, what it felt like before, and how you feel now. It's never going to be 100%. So be realistic about this, right? If you're trying to get something to cover up something that maybe doesn't have a lot of meaning and you're going to cover it up with something that does, is that going to negatively impact the way that you look at it? Because you're going to look at the tattoo and be like, oh, this reminds me of grandma. But I remember that piece of shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you don't want to have that carry with you. So after you've done all your background, you've thought about the tattoo artist's ability to compare, contrast, and you make a decision, that second bit that you're always going to have to do, right, is going to have to be, like, literally be, real be realistic, right? Realistic. Can't multitask you got to be realistic right because tattoo cover-ups are never 100 percent not even if you can just see the image like if we're scrolling through social media and i see a before and after it's amazing what they've done right but you don't get to see the human element of the cover-up all you're getting to do or all you're getting to see is what was done to begin with and what covered it you don't have the story behind it right I have worked with covering um, people who are victims of um, trafficking, sexual trafficking, and you know, um, they've had brand marks put on them and we've had to cover them up. And when you go to do that, like you can see the cover up, and I've never taken pictures to post of this, of course, because it's just awful. Um, but if you only see the pictures, you don't know what's come before, what that person had to go through to get that tattoo, right? So make sure, like, if you are the person on the receiving end wanting to get this cover-up done, be realistic. Remember, there's a human behind all this stuff, and you are a human as well. So if you want to do it, make sure that the, uh, the intention going into it and what you plan to get out of it are there, they're understood, and that uh, also <laughs> the tattoo artist is going to be able to respect that, right? Uh, that's it. I think that's good enough for today. Might touch on this again. I feel like that got pretty deep there at the end. and I, I don't know. I kind of want to do a cartwheel or something now to just loosen up. But anyways, um, let us know what you think of this. Comment, like, subscribe. Buy us a coffee. I love coffee. I've been drinking coffee all day. You can find links in the description. And um, maybe I'll put a link to Verb down there too so you can check them out. They are the best. This is Ryan from Bitter Tattooing. Signing off.